Since custom mechanical keyboards exploded in popularity in the last three to five years, we have seen products' quality features and availability increase exponentially. But because the demand for these keyboards had been so unbelievably high, the prices for the best boards kept creeping up to equally unbelievable levels. Now, in the doldrums of a worldwide financial crisis, though, custom keyboard designers and manufacturers are finally being forced to compete in one area that seemed unthinkable until just a few months ago price. And today, we'll look into a product that at just $139 might be the harbinger of a new era in the custom mechanical keyboard scene. Hello and welcome to IOSAM. I'm Sam Franco and this is a channel where I review and occasionally fix and mod PC peripherals for productivity and gaming. Today we're checking out ClickClack's latest collaboration with Vertex, the creators of the hugely successful Arc 60 and Equals, the company behind also enormously successful products such as the Tangerine Switches and the C3 Stabs that became household names in this hobby in the last few years. The TKD Psycho 7, a 70% FRL toolless kit that pushes the boundaries of quality, innovation, design, and more importantly, price. Starting at just $139 for the basic solder configuration, $164 for a decked out hot swappable, or as high as $180 for a fully loaded wireless config, this might be the most competitively priced premium custom mechanical keyboard ever offered. ClickLack.io is currently taking pre-orders for the Psycho 7 until August 22nd, and they'll produce as many as they can sell until the pre-order phase ends. As a disclaimer, ClickLack.io sent me this pre-production review unit free of any cost for the sole purpose of this video review. And as you all know, that doesn't change anything in my views and opinions about any of the products I cover in this channel. As a pre-production unit, you should be aware that there might be small differences between what you see in this video and what you get in a final retail version. But ClickClack assured me that the only changes will be small improvements to the PCB's design. I have no marketing affiliation with ClickClack, but I will leave a link for the Psycho 7 on the video description below. As usual, there will be links for other tools and parts that I use on this video, and many of those will have affiliate links that can generate revenue to help support this channel without any additional cost to you if you decide to use them. Starting with the packaging, this time things are more subdued than what we saw with the ARC-60, since here you get a more down-to-earth box. But on the other hand, here you get a nice carrying case, which is obviously much more appreciated since you can keep using it to store your assembled board, unlike the fancy box of the ARC-60. And while the packaging is not as padded as the ARCs, my board arrived safely with no damage. Inside the box, you get the keyboard's case and a thick shrink wrap, C3 equals tabs, a bag with rubber plugs for the PCB, space bar foam, bump ons, gasket strips, and the beans, which we'll go over later. The plate, which I got the polycarbonate one, a foam kit with case, plate, and PE sheets, and finally, your choice of PCB inside an anti-static bag. As usual with this type of enthusiast custom, you don't get a cable, and you unfortunately also don't get a manual or assembly guide. If you like mechanical keyboards and DIY electronics, did you know you can design your own keyboard and then have it manufactured for you? Be it a single prototype or hundreds of units for your next group buy, PCBWay can help you throughout this whole process. They offer all the services you need, such as PCB prototyping, manufacturing and assembly, as well as plate and case CNC machining, injection molding or 3D printing. PCBWay is the leading one-stop shop solution that offers you fast turnaround times, all the latest tech in PCB fabrication, an easy-to-use interface to submit your designs, and a team of experts to help you during the whole process. Oh, and remember to check their Mechanical Keyboard's shared projects page with dozens of ideas for keyboards and parts you can build for yourself or use as inspiration for your next original design. Check the video description below for more information and for $5 off your first order with PCBWay.com. The layout here is the latest trend in the hobby, FRL or 70% which is basically a TKL without the F row. And like most trends in this hobby, this layout might be more about aesthetics than functionality, really, since shaving off the top row might not make as much of a difference in space saving as shaving off the right side cluster would. But even a TKL fanatic like me has to admit that the lack of an F row cleans up the profile and makes the keyboard look a bit more elegant. While small form factor keyboards users are already used to access the F row in a secondary layer, I know many F keys users out there will revolt here, of course. I use the F row at work, but not at home, so I don't mind having it under the numbers row on a secondary layer. For the PCB, I went with the solder version here, which has two longitudinal flex cuts under the numbers and above the bottom row, 
and relies on a daughter board for USB-C connectivity, which is always nice to see, especially for this price range. I'm not a huge fan of flex cuts on PCBs, but here at least we have these rubber plugs that you can use to patch these cuts, which helps to preserve the acoustics without taking away the deck flex that most enthusiasts want on their keyboards these days, which was an interesting compromise. The controller here has the mandatory N key rollover and supports both VIA and VIO, which is great to see since I will always go with VIO whenever that is available on a keyboard. The other advantage of going with the solder version is the flexibility you get with the layout, which allows you to go with either ISO or ANSI, Sangan or Moogle bottom row, and regular or split backspace and right shift. Stabs are obviously PCB mounted here and the ones you get in the box are really good. I always liked C3 stabs and the V3 versions included here is even better than the previous ones I have been using for a while now. Smooth plastics, straight wires, quality screws, included washers and all the modding adhesives and dampers you can possibly want. Really an incredible value to have this included in this kit. As for enthusiast etiquette, you get no per key backlighting here of course. Just a single small decorative RGB LED on the right side, configurable through VR or VIO, that doubles as a caps lock indicator, which is at least useful. Unlike the more sophisticated ARC-60 with its elaborate plate ring that allowed switching between plate and plateless mounting, the Psycho 7 has a more traditional plated setup. And the designers offer you a choice of aluminum, FR4 or the polycarbonate one that I have here. I picked the PC plate because I wanted this build to have a lower frequency tone to it, with my choice of switches we'll discuss later. As for the mounting system, you have the choice of going with traditional pour on gasket strips or go with what TKD calls gasket beans, these small rubber nubs that resemble the tadpoles used in some Geonworks keyboards, such as the Frog TKL, for example. The gasket beans here promise to give you a more balanced amount of flex than the traditional gasket strips, since they reduce the contact area with the bottom's case edges. Together with the soft PC plate I have here, this does make for a very flexy build if used with no case foam, but you can obviously build a Psycho 7 with more or less flex depending on your choice of plate materials and gaskets. The Psycho 7 case is CNC aluminum and it goes for a much more minimalistic design with straight lines than previous Vertex boards, which was an obvious choice given the price target they had for this board. Since straight lines are easier and quicker to machine than curves, so the less time it takes to finish each case, the cheaper it is to produce, considering the hourly cost to operate an industrial CNC mill. But the traditional rectangle on a wedge does not take anything away from this keyboard's aesthetics. This case looks beautiful in my opinion. The rounded corners with tall top and bottom bezels and the lack of any branding other than the small TKD logo on the back gives this board a simple but classy look. The PVD accent, where the LED light sits, helps to break the otherwise ultra-minimalistic design of the Cycle 7. You get two choices of finish, anodized and what they call the TKD coating. My unit has the TKD coating, which is a type of electrostatic process that gives it a slightly coarser texture. The designers claim this coating has the advantage of offering durability with better color representations, which at least for my lavender choice, it is spot on, beautiful color. As for the quality of the finish, it is just perfect in my copy. No splashes, streaks, banding or discolorations of any kind, neither inside or outside. The more textured touch also has two other advantages in my opinion. It is not slippery, which makes it easier to grab, and it does not get smudged with fingerprints, which makes it look cleaner and nicer on day-to-day -day use. So this new coating definitely gets the thumbs up from me. The case is composed of just two parts, top and bottom. The bottom case comes with two brass weights that looks to have the same type of coating as the case, and which can be replaced by batteries in the wireless version, and a bottom stainless steel weight that you can get in polished, sandblasted or PVD finish. Mine came with this purple PVD finish, which looks beautiful, but will be a fingerprint magnet, of course. The bottom comes with the USB-C daughter board pre-installed and has the proper channel for its nice flat cable to attach to the PCB, which was a great design choice since it makes much easier to attach and eliminates the chance of having the cable misaligned and stuck between the PCB and the case during assembly. Now, the most interesting and noteworthy part of this design is the toolless aspect of putting these two parts together. Here, you don't use any screws. Instead, you have this ball and catch mechanism that is ridiculously easy to open and close while still feeling solid. This case will not open by accident. You have to really want to open it to be able to separate the two halves. I've seen other toolless metal keyboard case designs out there, such as the interesting and always in stock Key Boom Moon Shadow 81, which I'll be reviewing here in the channel soon, that has tabs that you can use to lock the two halves together. 
but the ball and catch system of the Cycle 7 is far sturdier and it also has this satisfying click when closing it. Another awesome touch is the inclusion of integrated force brake pads into the case, which ensures you get no case ping whatsoever here, since these pads don't let vibrations to travel from one half of the case to the other. This is the kind of stuff that shows the designers not only know what they're doing, but also that they are paying attention to the smallest of details, which is great. The case measures 35.7 centimeters in width, 11.8 centimeters in depth, 2 centimeters in height in the front side, and 3.3 centimeters in the back. Both measurements here already include the 2 millimeters added by the bump ons. The inclination angle is 7 degrees when measured on top of the third row of chair profile keycaps. It weighs 1.9 kilograms or 4 pounds and 3 ounces when fully built with PC plate and ABS keycaps. This is a heavy boy that won't move in your desk. You can get the Cycle 7 in one of five colors for the anodized finish and seven colors for the TKD coating. The Cycle 7 comes with a foam kit in the box, consisting of a thin regular foam sheet for the bottom case, a thick orange sheet for the plate, and a PE sheet for the PCB. The use of these is 100% optional, of course, and should be used according to your own personal preferences. For my soldered build, I use the plate foam plus the space bar foam cut, which always helps to reduce stabs noise as well as coil and leaf spring ping from switches. But because I was not going for a loud build, I did not use the PE foam. In the sound test chapter, you hear this board with and without case foam. While I was planning to use it without, I found out that my PC plate with gasket beans is so soft that if I hit the left shift or the right arrow key with a bit of force, the switch pins were slamming against the bottom case, which I don't like. While the keyboard didn't short, the noise that it makes in that case is distracting. So in the end, I opted to keep the foam to avoid that problem. Keeping the case foam also reduced the flex of the PC plate with the gasket beans to what I consider a more manageable flex level. So that was also an advantage to me. The Cycle 7 is QMK and VIA compatible, which is what we expect for any custom keyboard nowadays. While I had issues using the Cycle 7 with the online version of VIA, which did identify the keyboard but wouldn't load the interface correctly, probably because my browsers usually block most types of scripts, I didn't waste any time with VIA anyway. Whenever the open source VIO option is available, I'll always go with it instead, which worked perfectly with the Cycle 7. I prefer VIO to VIA, and this is a hill I'll be fighting on to death if I have to. But regardless of which one you go with, it should be a breeze to reconfigure your layout and set up any macros here. ClickLag.io does not have a warranty policy explicitly defined on their website, but they promise to take care of their customers on a case-by-case -case basis. All they ask is for you to let them know by email what the issue is with photos and or videos of the problem, and they should take it from there. This is a custom kit, so you obviously have to bring your own switches and keycaps. So let's quickly go through my choices here. For switches, I decided to give the Cherry MX Black Hyperglides a second chance. When I first tried them in my TKC Portico video almost two years ago, I disliked the grainy feel they had when typing, even after lubed and filmed. When compared to the much smoother TKC Tangerines, Glorious Pandas, Everglide Aqua Kings, and Infinity Key Cow switches at the time. But since I know Cherry switches need to be broken in to start feeling good, I decided to put the hyperglides to work here. Besides, say what you will about Cherry Blacks, but they do have one thing going for them, the low pitch sound coming from their top nylon housing. And since I was going for a low frequency fuck with this build, I figured that could be a good match. I know people will tell you to always replace Cherry stock springs for something better, and while Cherry springs do sound crunchy and horrible in stock form, if you lube them individually with a thick Rytox mix like I do, they'll sound fine. But if you don't want to lube springs manually, then yeah, get some nicer TX or Sprit springs and those will sound better with less work. For keycaps, I finally decided to give Drop DCX a chance to see if they can indeed replace GMK in the premium ABS Cherry style keycaps. I picked this Hyperfuse colorway, which is a really nice set with gray light alphas with purple legends, dark gray mods with teal legends, and some teal accent keys an absolute perfect match to the lavender color of my Cycle 7. In terms of thickness, sound, and overall color quality, yes, the DCX is on par with GMK for a slightly discounted price, which is great. The only area where it loses to GMK is in the quality of the Legends, which the DCX has thinner and less defined letters than their German competitors. But on a blind test, 
I could not tell the difference in typing, feel, and sound between the two. To assemble the solderable Psycho 7, I started by prepping the included C3 stabs, lubing the housings and stems with my 50-50 mix of Crytox 205 Grade 2 grease and 105 oil, and XHT BDZ on the wire tips. I used the included PCB stickers that replaced the old Band-Aid mod, but did not use the multitude of other adhesives included in the kit. The C3 version 3 comes with all sorts of stickers of different thickness and sizes for you to place under the stamps, to wrap around the wires in case you want to go with a holy mod, and even to place under the wires so they don't touch the PCB. But I don't do holy mod, because my experience with them has not been good in the long run since the lubricants applied to the housings and wires eventually dissolves the glue from whatever stickers you put on the tips of the wires, which then becomes loose and start to gum up the innards of the stabs, which is an even bigger problem if you use a soldered PCB, where you'd have to desolder all the switches to be able to fix the stabs. You don't want to do that. So, I just stick to my tried and true Crytox XHD BDZ on the wires, which lasts forever and never disappoints. Then it was just placing the foam and the plate, snapping the switches to the PCB and plate assembly, and then soldering everything with my trusty Hakko FX 888D. The trick here is to do a few switches in the corners first, just to secure the plate, and then finish the rest. After soldering everything and cleaning the PCB, I went ahead and installed the gasket beans on the plate. Plugged the daughter board to the PCB and snapped the top frame over the whole assembly, ensuring I got a click coming from all four ball and catch attachment points. So let's hear how this soldered PCB TKD Cycle 7 sounds with the PC plate Cherry MX Black Hyperglides lubed and filmed, and drops DCX Hyperfuse keycaps with plate foam, no PE sheet, and with and without case foam. Yeah, it sounds pretty damn good. My plan to build a configuration that had as lower frequency sounds as possible was a resounding success in my opinion. And this keyboard will definitely be in high rotation in my home office going forward. Interestingly, it was a bit louder with the case foam than without, although the sound without the case foam had a bit sharper high-end frequencies as you'd expect. But the difference was pretty small between the two anyway, to the point where I decided to keep the foam just to have some padding to prevent the switch pins of the two lower rows from touching the bottom of the case. But I have to say, this is the best sounding keyboard I have ever built for this price range. Now, as you can expect, different plate materials, foam and gaskets configurations, switches and keycaps will obviously make your Cycle 7 sound different from mine. But it is pretty clear to me that the case design the choice of materials and the plate mounting system was extremely well executed here. 
to the point where I'm confident that this board will sound amazing with pretty much any configuration you throw at it. All right, so what are my conclusions about the TKD Cycle 7? As I said before, I love TKLs, so I feel equally at home with FRLs and I love the way they look. As for the lack of the F-Row, I suspect the vast majority of people in this hobby are already used to accessing function keys on the secondary layer anyway so that shouldn't be a problem to most of you. I also love the TKD coating. I take this over anodization any day of the week. You get a pretty decent variety of colors in both types of finish, so you should get a Psycho 7 in a color that suits your intended build. And because Vertex has built a name for themselves and the quality of their color matching process, chances are you're not going to be disappointed by the actual color of the board you get in the mail. As for the actual design, I know this is a pretty basic rectangle and a wedge. So if you already have a large collection of customs in all sorts of shapes and sizes, you probably already have another board that looks like this. But if you're coming from pre-builds or entry-level customs, and this would be your first premium custom, I think it would be easy to focus instead on the other pros of this keyboard that separates it from the competition. And its biggest pro is its sound and typing feel. This is easily the best keyboard I've ever tried for 150 bucks. This thing is an incredible achievement in design and engineering for its price. It sounds and feels insanely good to the point that even the graininess of the brand new Hyperglides didn't bother me. While the gasket beans on the PC plate felt slightly too flexy for my taste, adding the thin case foam brought it back to what I considered the perfect amount of flex. Which is a sign of a good keeper design, when you can easily tune it to fit your preferences. The overall quality of the Psycho 7 is much more than I was expecting for the price. Other than the issue with my left shift and right arrow keys hitting the bottom case with my PC plate, which I fixed with the case foam, I can't find anything else to nitpick here. I know a lot of people had said this about this board already, and I'll just join the choir here. If Vertex had priced this board $100 higher, I'd still say it was a fair price. Top-notch materials, tasteful design, remarkable usability, precise engineering, and flawless manufacturing. For $150 for the configuration I have here, which even includes a quality carrying case, this is a steal. Which means this is possibly the most competitively priced premium custom keyboard I have ever tried. And I believe that after the Cycle 7, every other keyboard designer, manufacturer, and vendor out there will have to stop and rethink their projects really hard going forward. Because this thing is basically a new benchmark for bang for the buck. So, in mid-2023, what can you get in the same quality and features for 150 bucks? Honestly, I don't know. I don't think there's anything out there right now that can compete with this. I mean, a bare-bones Keychron Q1 or GMMK Pro costs more than this. So, in the custom community, there is absolutely nothing. The Psycho 7 is creating a new market segment, and for the time being, it will be sitting alone in that segment until the rest of the market finds a way to catch up to it. Now, this board would not be the ideal product to everybody, of course. This is clearly a typist-focused product, as most premium customs usually are anyway. So yeah, here you don't get the latest tech and fast actuation and low input latency you get on top gaming boards such as those from Wooting and Razer, nor the fancy lights of most other pre-builds out there. But if those things are not on the top of your list, there are plenty of pros to consider here. The layout, while not in the trendy 75% category, is still very usable. Other than the lack of an afro, it will feel right at home to anyone who has ever used a TKL. With its VIA and VIA compatibility, you could even reprogram the NAV cluster to store anything you want, from key combos to more elaborate macros. And because it is a TKL from the neck down, the arrows cluster is right where you expect it to be, which is a big advantage over 60%. With its toolless chassis, this is also one of the most beginners-friendly customs I've ever seen. You get this in a hot swap configuration, you could assemble this whole board in minutes instead of hours. So what's the catch here? There's gotta be a catch, right? Well, there is one. It's a group buy. Which means that if you don't get it now, no one knows for sure if or when there will be a round two. As my viewers know, I don't ever take group buys lightly, especially for beginners in this hobby. But even I have to open a bracket here and say that if there was every group buy worth considering from a vendor with a spotless reputation that has shown to be very reliable with all their projects so far and quick to deliver their products, this would be it. But I want to know what you think. Are the features and price of the Psycho 7 enough to push you to join a group buy at this point in 2023? Let me know in the comments below. And while in there, leave any questions and as always, I'll be happy to help. Links for absolutely everything are in the video description below as usual. And if you want to check the other Vertex banger, check out my review of the ARC 60 that I posted here in the channel earlier this year. Or click here 
if you want to check out my latest desk setup upgrades. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.